process was painful, <laughs> literally and figuratively. Um, it was obviously a lot harder than we thought it would be. We're literally up past our ankles in mud. Ultimately, you have to have that big picture in your head or else it'd be really hard to motivate yourself to do this. <laughs> cold it's very frosty but yeah it looks great looks really nice it's just a bit slippy for us wandering about skin flats is a managed realignment that we carried out in 2018 Now we're developing salt marsh and other nice habitats here and part of that is these, um, well we have three islands. are particularly good um, during the breeding season. It just gives them that wee bit of extra security for them and for their young and the same during the winter when they're sort of they're trying to loaf up during the day and, and just chill out really. We're going to be reprofiling them with the digger and then we're going to be uh, putting a shingle cap on top of that that's going to raise the height of the islands up so that they'll be out of the, the water even on the highest tides because at the moment on high tides they do flood which isn't much use for, for birds when they're trying to nest. This is a small area, relatively small, let's say 10 hectares. What we're trying to do is maximise those benefits for biodiversity. We're really trying to get put in as much in it so to get, deliver from a, a bigger, bigger suite of species. This is very much for breeding birds and it's creating essentially shingle tops for the islands and the birds like oyster catchers. Now, we hope, possibly even like avocets and maybe ring plovers will come and use that and they like nesting on these islands so that they nest their ground they nest on the ground they like being surrounded by water or in this case kind of silty stuff so predators like foxes can't get to them and the shingle they again they like nesting on it because it kind of replicates the habitats that they nest in in the wild
plan before Christmas, when we tried the first time, was we were going to get a contractor to do it for us. Fortunately, it didn't work out. So now we're doing it ourselves, by hand, with some amazing volunteers. We've got 40 tonnes of shingle that need to be moved on to three different islands. Kind of get the small digger onto the island. He's done a bit of reprofiling for us, sort of raked it up, got rid of the vegetation. And then we've spent the rest of the day just moving the shingle. We've got some really useful power barrows, which does make it much easier to move. And here we're just moving this shingle from one place to another. It really is difficult because A, you've got to, you can't do this at high tide. So you've got to pick your day really carefully. You've got to pick your time of day. And even then, I mean, you've seen, we're literally up past our ankles in mud. So far today, we've had lovely glorious sunshine. We've had snow, we've had rain. But yeah, it's really changeable, but you just kind of got to get on with it and do it. Ultimately, you have to have that big picture in your head or else it'd be really hard to motivate yourself to do this. <laughs> yes. Oh, nearly 20 tonnes of shingle moved by hand by fantastic volunteers. We thought this was going to take us a fortnight in December. It's now mid-March. Yeah, just that sometimes that's what happens. You start a plan, it doesn't go to doesn't go to plan. You have to rethink it, you try something else, that may or may not work, you might be onto another plan, and eventually you get there and you get some great habitat like this with birds. We've got shingle on three islands, which is great, which considering where we were in December, we didn't think we'd get there. The process was painful, <laughs> literally and figuratively. Um, it was obviously a lot harder than we thought it would be, but to be stood here now, looking out, shingle on the island, it looks great. This is the way it was 300 years ago before we came along and put sea walls in place to you know, create land for farming. We're five years down the line since the managed realignment now, and this is just this is how it should look with the salt marsh and yeah the islands for the birds during the high tides. I think it has been worth it. We've got birds already sort of prospecting the islands, uh, looking to nest. Um, it's still fairly early in the season. Hopefully, we'll see more of that, and then come the autumn, hopefully, we'll see lots of birds using them for roosting at high tides and stuff. So yeah, it's been worth it.